Have you ever wondered what the worst car in the history of the world might be? It's not an easy question to answer. After all, how do we define the worst? Is it about the poorest performance, the most hazardous safety issues, the most glaring design flaws, or perhaps the most scathing reception from the public? Or is it a combination of all these factors? Let's start by considering performance. A car that can't get you from point A to point B without breaking down every other mile is certainly a candidate for the worst. We've all heard stories of cars that seem to spend more time in the repair shop than on the road, and it's safe to say no one enjoys that kind of ride. Next, let's talk safety. Over the years, we've seen cars that were so unsafe, they were practically death traps on wheels. From faulty brakes to unreliable airbags, safety issues have the potential to turn any car into the worst one in history. After all, what's the point of having a car if it puts your life at risk every time you get behind the wheel? Then there are those design flaws that make you wonder, what were they thinking? From the bizarre and ugly to the downright dysfunctional, car design has seen some serious missteps over the years. A car that's poorly designed not only looks unappealing, but it can also lead to a host of other problems, from reduced fuel efficiency to increased wear and tear. Lastly, we must consider the public's reception. A car that fails to impress the public, that garners nothing but negative reviews and widespread disdain, is definitely in the running for the title of the worst car in history. After all, the court of public opinion is a powerful judge. So, with these criteria in mind, there's just one question left to ask. Which car ticks all these boxes? Today, we're taking a journey through time to unravel the story of this notorious automobile. Our story begins in the mid-20th century amidst a booming automobile industry. The air was thick with the scent of innovation as car manufacturers were driven by a singular goal, to engineer machines that would redefine mobility. In the heart of this revolution, a particular company was brewing its own storm. With high hopes and even higher expectations, they set foot on a journey to create a car that would change the world. The vision was grand, the ambition palpable. This was meant to be more than a car. It was a statement, a testament to the company's prowess and a beacon of the future. The design went through countless iterations, each one more sophisticated than the last. Sleek lines, a robust engine, and an interior that whispered luxury. Every aspect of this car was meticulously crafted. It was a marvel of engineering, a masterpiece that promised to be the crowning jewel in the company's portfolio. But this was more than just a pretty face. The car was packed with features that were ahead of its time. From advanced safety measures to innovative comfort features, it was meant to be a vehicle that catered to every whim of its driver. The company believed in their creation, and they were certain that the market would too. The conditions were ripe for this endeavor. The economy was thriving, the consumers were hungry for innovation, and the competition, while fierce, was not insurmountable. It was the perfect storm a golden opportunity for the company to etch its name in the annals of automotive history. And so, with a heart full of dreams and a car full of promises, the company unveiled their creation to the world. It was a spectacle to behold, a moment of triumph that marked the beginning of a new era. But as they say, not all that glitters is gold. Behind the glitz and glamour, behind the applause and admiration, a storm was brewing. Little did everyone know this promising beginning was about to take a drastic turn. As the car hit the market, it was met not with applause, but with disbelief. The anticipated roar of engines turned into whispers of concern. Performance, a key marker of any vehicle's worth, was the first to come under fire. The machine was sluggish, the horsepower lacking. It was as if the car was always carrying a heavy burden, struggling to keep pace even on the most forgiving of roads. From the city streets to the open highways, the car's lackluster performance was an unshakable shadow that followed it everywhere. Safety, an attribute that should never be compromised, was the next to raise eyebrows. The car's safety measures were not just inadequate, they were almost non-existent. The brakes were unreliable, the seatbelts flimsy, and the bodywork brittle. Every trip in this vehicle was a gamble, a roll of the dice with fate. It seemed as if the car was not built to protect its occupants, but to test their luck. The public's response was one of disenchantment. 
the shiny new release was quickly tarnished by the grim realities of its performance and safety issues. The car that was meant to be a dream on wheels became a nightmare in motion. The roar of its engine was not of power, but of desperation. The gleam of its bodywork was not of quality, but of deception. The company scrambled to fix the glaring problems, to salvage what was quickly becoming a public relations disaster. Engineers worked tirelessly, attempting to breathe life into the failing machine. But each effort was in vain. Every attempt to fix one issue seemed to unearth another. The car, it seemed, was fundamentally flawed. Advertisements, once filled with promises of power and safety, now echoed hollowly. Marketing campaigns that once drew crowds, now only attracted criticism. The company's attempts to improve the car's image were met with skepticism and ridicule. The vehicle that was supposed to represent innovation and progress was quickly becoming a symbol of failure. The car was quickly becoming a symbol of failure. The downhill journey was well underway, and it was a steep descent. Despite all attempts to salvage the situation, the end was inevitable. This car, once a shiny beacon of hope and innovation, soon became a symbol of failure and disgrace. When the harsh reality of its faults became clear, the company had no choice but to withdraw the car from the market. This decision, though necessary, was far from painless. The financial loss was staggering. The company had sunk significant resources into the production, marketing and distribution of this ill-fated vehicle. The withdrawal meant writing off these investments, resulting in immense financial loss. But the damage to the company's reputation was even more profound. They had promised a revolution in automotive design and performance, but instead, they delivered a disaster. The car's withdrawal was just the beginning of the company's woes. In the aftermath, they faced a flurry of investigations and lawsuits. Customers felt deceived, investors felt betrayed, and regulatory bodies were not amused. Each revelation during these investigations further tarnished the car's image and deepened the company's crisis. The lawsuits were brutal. Customers sought compensation for their wasted investments and the potential risks they had been exposed to. Investors sought redress for the significant financial losses they had incurred. Regulatory bodies demanded answers and accountability. The company was on the defensive, fighting battles on multiple fronts. In the court of public opinion, the car was already guilty. The media coverage was relentless, with each new revelation adding fuel to the fire. The car became a punchline, a cautionary tale, a symbol of corporate hubris and failure. Through it all, the company tried to salvage its reputation, to rebuild trust, to make amends. They made changes in leadership, implemented new quality control measures and issued public apologies. But the damage was done. The trust was broken, the reputation tarnished, the financial losses insurmountable. And so, the worst car in the history of the world met its unfortunate end. This tale serves as a stark reminder that ambition without caution can lead to disaster, and that the pursuit of innovation should never compromise safety and reliability. Today, this car is remembered not for its ambition, but for its spectacular failure. The story of this car is a tale of hope turned into despair, ambition turned into calamity, and dreams turned into nightmares. It started as a beacon of hope, a symbol of innovation and progress in the automotive industry. The design was bold, the marketing was confident, and the expectations were high. The industry buzzed with anticipation, and consumers waited with bated breath. However, as soon as it hit the road, it was clear that the car was not what it was made out to be. The car's performance was abysmal. It was sluggish, unresponsive, and lacked the power that was promised. It failed to meet not only the performance standards set by the industry, but also the basic expectations of the consumers. The ride was bumpy, the handling was poor, and the fuel efficiency was nothing to write home about. Moreover, the car's safety standards were grossly inadequate. Reports of malfunctions and accidents started pouring in, painting a grim picture of the car's reliability. The faulty design and substandard manufacturing led to numerous recalls, further tarnishing the car's image and draining the company's resources. The reception of the car was, to put it mildly, not warm. The public was disappointed. The critics were ruthless, and the sales were dismal. The car quickly became a laughingstock, 
a symbol of failure and incompetence. It was dubbed the worst car in history, a title it still holds to this day. The damage to the company's reputation was severe and lasting. The trust was broken, the brand was tarnished, and the financial losses were massive. The company struggled to recover from the blow, and its name will forever be associated with this disastrous venture. Despite its failure, the car left an unforgettable legacy. It serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of overambition, poor execution, and disregard for quality and safety standards. It is a cautionary tale for the industry, a lesson in humility, and a symbol of the importance of meeting and exceeding consumer expectations. Did you know that the Ford Pinto, once a symbol of the American dream, became a nightmare due to a single deadly design flaw? That's right. The Ford Pinto was a ticking time bomb on wheels. The story of the Ford Pinto begins in the early 70s. The 1971 Ford Pinto was Ford's answer to the rising popularity of small, fuel-efficient cars from overseas. Ford's mission was to create a car that weighed less than 2,000 pounds and cost less than $2,000. With a mission like that, the Pinto seemed destined for success. However, the rush to get the Pinto on the market introduced a fatal flaw. In their haste, Ford placed the Pinto's fuel tank behind the rear axle where it was prone to rupturing in a rear-end collision. This wasn't just a minor oversight, it was a catastrophic design flaw that would soon cast a dark shadow over the Pinto's legacy. The realization of the Pinto's deadly defect didn't take long to surface. The first reported incident occurred in 1972, a year after the Pinto's launch. A minor collision resulted in a fuel tank rupture, engulfing the car in flames and tragically claiming the lives of its passengers. This was the beginning of a series of similar accidents, each one chipping away at the Pinto's reputation. Despite growing concerns, Ford initially chose not to recall the Pinto. An infamous cost-benefit analysis suggested it would be cheaper to settle potential lawsuits than to make the necessary design changes. This cold, calculated decision further tarnished Ford's reputation and turned the Pinto into a symbol of corporate indifference. Finally, in 1978, after years of public outcry and mounting legal pressure, Ford recalled the Pinto. By then, the damage had been done. The Pinto's legacy was irreparably marred and Ford's reputation had taken a serious hit. Fast forward to today, the Pinto is remembered not as a symbol of American ingenuity, but as a cautionary tale. Its story serves as a stark reminder of the perils of prioritizing profit over safety, a lesson that continues to resonate in the automotive industry. In summary, the Ford Pinto began as a promising response to a changing market, but a deadly design flaw transformed it into a grim symbol of corporate negligence. Despite the Pinto's initial popularity, its legacy is now defined by its dangerous fuel tank placement, Ford's refusal to recall the model, and the tragic loss of life that resulted from these decisions. The Pinto's tale is a shocking chapter in automotive history, a stark reminder of the potentially devastating consequences when corners are cut in the name of profit. It's a story that continues to send ripples through the automotive world, a sobering lesson in the importance of prioritizing safety over savings. This is the shocking truth about the Ford Pinto. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content like this.